that Elvis Presley honeymooned uh, in, in a mobile home. You know, now his mobile home had a gold plated sink and a gold plated tub and stuff like that. But so I'm not threatening you, Mr. Mr. Seller. I'm just saying I, I'm I'm going to keep being the squeaky wheel until I, I get the attention that I deserve. Hey, guys, my name is Michael. I'm CEO and co-founder of this consumer. I'm speaking to Tony Kovach again today. This is the second video in a series talking about manufactured homes. Uh, we brought Tony on uh, to speak about manufactured homes to give you real tips that uh, you can utilize in your life as you are looking to buy, to purchase housing for yourself or your loved ones. Uh, manufactured homes and the expert Tony Kovac comes in to explain to us the processes that are involved in buying the manufactured homes and how it would differentiate itself from buying a regular house. Uh, Tony will introduce himself again and talk about his expertise in the industry, and then we will get to questions. Thanks, Michael, again, for, for having me for this follow-up interview. It, one, I, I've lived in manufactured homes about half of my adult life. I've lived in conventional housing, as I mentioned in the first video, owned nice houses in, in nice neighborhoods. So, so I've got a firsthand experience of manufactured homes as well as uh, literally over 25 years of professional experience. Uh, one of the things I like to tell um, consumers, Michael, is that that some of the rich and famous have bought and lived in, in manufactured homes. Going back to the mobile home era, some people don't realize that that Elvis Presley honeymooned uh, in, in a mobile home. You know, now his mobile home had a gold-plated sink and a gold-plated tub and stuff like that. But now I think that's important to know because if it's good enough for the rich and famous, it should be good enough for you and me. And, and they certainly have the ability to do their own homework, you know, make sure that they're making a good investment, making a good decision. Also, there's third-party research about the people who actually have purchased a manufactured home and, and you know, how much they like or love their homes. So, for instance, according to Southeast Research, which is a professional research certified op operation, 97% of owners of new manufactured homes, they describe their homes as attractive. Uh, Some like 92% of those same people said that they feel like their homes are safe. So uh, about 45% of those surveyed said that they could have bought a conventional house, but they decided to buy a manufactured home instead. So these are reasons to think that, you know, it's prudent to consider buying a manufactured home. A couple of years ago, we, we had um, uh, the National Association of Realtors, uh, a lady named Scholastica Gay Corora Tone. She did research on manufactured housing. Um, the market for manufactured homes, I think, is what the name of her research study was. But basically what she said is that manufactured homes have evolved from the trailer house and the mobile home era to being very quality homes that, that actually stand up well in, in tornadoes and hurricanes and so on and so forth. We have videos and articles on that, that uh, on our MH Living News website. So the common fear that people have really shouldn't be a fear factor at all. There's something like 500,000 to one odds in your favor that if you own a manufactured home, <laughs> that you won't be in a tornado and die, you know, that kind of thing. So, so the safety factor is definitely there. Okay, now, so having gotten rid of the, the, the typical things, let, let's get down to some things that, that, you know, there's basically two different ways somebody might buy a manufactured home. And I'm going to oversimplify. What are the pros and cons of buying a manufactured home? What, is, what do you see as positive sides and negatives that you can highlight to the consumers? You know, the, the positives are really quite, quite numerous. One, if you're buying the home, one, you're saving money. Two, if you're an environmentally conscious kind of person, it, as we said in the first video, there's actually less, less waste. The homes tend to be more energy efficient and so on. So apples to apples, manufactured homes, are, are there's less waste than conventional housing, they're more energy efficient and so on. Um, it, on, the, on the negative side, quite frankly, I, I would say that maybe the single biggest factor that, um, it, that I'd say is a, a frustration 
the process can seem daunting. We want to get into that maybe a little bit more detail in, in, in a couple of minutes. Um, another thing that I think can be um, a, a bit of a, a concern to some consumers is that you know, there's not as many financing options. You know, there's not as many manufactured homes sold as there are conventional houses. There's not as many financing options. That said, for for a, a serious shopper, if you really want to buy a manufactured home, there's regional and national lenders that do this kind of lending. If you do a good Google search, you're going to find that somebody in your market is going to be able to serve you. Beyond that, there's FHA, VA, USDA, or rural housing. Many states have uh, first-time home buyers programs that manufactured homes qualify for. So, so long story short, Michael, um, there's there's a lot of positives in terms of of purchasing the home, but there are some hoops to jump through, and we probably ought to talk about those hoops. There is a consumer in front of us right now who is watching this video. What shall that uh, prospect consumer know before buying a manufactured home? What are the steps that the person should uh, consider? And what are your insider tips for that prospect that is considering buying a home? And they don't know whether it's going to be manufactured, mobile, conventional home. What shall consumer know about manufactured homes, uh, the industries that you are specializing? Sure. So, so Michael, that's such a significant question because I think that if people are are less afraid of the home buying process, then you know they're going to be more willing to to explore it. And when they explore the process, they're going to find out that that really there's a lot of benefits that they could get. Now, that said, I'm going to oversimplify this and break it into two categories. Generally speaking, you're either going to buy a manufactured home that's already installed somewhere. It may be new. It may be pre-owned. That's a pretty straightforward process. It's going to be a lot like buying a house from a real estate agent or from a developer. So I'm not going to spend much time on that. I'm just going to say that, that you know, it's a straightforward process. No, no real surprises or, 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 you know, hoops, extra hoops to jump there. So what I want to focus on for a few minutes is the idea of, what if you're going to a manufactured home retailer? Um, there's a lot of details there. And, and those details sometimes can seem daunting. But if you if you get through those details, I'm going to oversimplify this in a second. So let me list the details first. So for instance, where do you want to put the home? So the, you know, the site selection is a, is a question. Is the proposed site that you're interested in, is it suitable for a manufactured home? Because not every site is, is going to be you know, an ideal selection. And there's people that, that, you know, address those kinds of issues. Do you want to buy a manufactured home that's in a retailer's inventory? Or would you rather, you know, custom order a home, which is going to take longer because it's coming from the factory? What kind of floor plans do you want? Because there's a wide variety of floor plans that are out there. Where do you go for financing? Uh, what about taxes, insurance, and other costs that people may not think about early on? So, let me take the fear factor out of all those those items we just talked about with this real simple principle. And if this seems like, you know, uh, oversimplification, sometimes the simple is just the truth. And it's this. What, what a person is looking for if they're going to buy from a retailer is you want to find a, a good informed agent, meaning a sales agent. And you want to find a good company that will help you navigate those details. Everybody wants to sell you a house. The question is, is this person that you're about to engage with, are they informed? Are they experienced? You know, do they have any consumer complaints that they might find on a site like Piss Consumer and, and things like that? So not to insult a, a rookie sales agent, but for example, let's say that you as a consumer went to a sales center. And you're asking the sales agent some questions. If the person doesn't seem that informed, I would just stop right there and say, listen, I want to speak to the owner or manager. And if the owner or manager cares, then, you know, they're going to listen to your concern and they're going to assign you somebody that, that can do that, you know, can do a better job for you. The other thing that a person might encounter, Michael, what if you're talking to maybe someone that's got experience, but what if they're not that ethical? 
And, and needless to say, it's it, you want to spot that unethical salesperson. Um, and, and, you know, so here's some, some of the things that I'd be looking for. If I'm asking somebody a straight question and it seems like they're ducking that question, or are they shading? Are they trying to, you know, dip around it? Again, I wouldn't necessarily discount the company, but I would go to the owner or the manager and say, listen, you know, I, I want to speak with somebody else. You know, this may be a fine person, but, but, you know, we're not hitting it off, you know, that kind of thing. You know, I want someone that's honest. I want someone that's ethical so on. Now, so if you have someone that's 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 honest, that's professional, then that is really maybe the most important thing that a consumer can do. Because once you sit down with that with that informed agent, then the rest of those items that we talked about location, do you want to buy an inventory, you, you know, all those different things, financing or whatever, all that can come into focus. They can simplify that process. Because they do that every day of their lives. You know, we as consumers, we buy a house a few times a year, a few times in our lifetime, pardon me, and that's it. You know, but but those people in the industry, if they're good at their job, they do it all the time. So they should do a, you know, a good job. I'd give two more quick tips and then we can move on to whatever you have next, Michael. But that's this. Don't let personality persuade you. I've seen people that are maybe not the most personable but they're they're as honest as the day is long i've also seen people that have great personalities and and unfortunately they may have a reputation for being manipulative or whatever so so don't let personality be what guides you what you want is someone that's going to shoot straight and and don't be at bashful to ask somebody you know at that same location to you know to speak to someone who is an expert that's going to be fair and and if you don't think you've got that, then I'd go on to the next place. I just wouldn't do business there. Would you be able to give a tip how to recognize a bad player in the manufactured housing industry? Is there a question that you would suggest asking? Even before I'd go into a retail center, and and you know this isn't a secret, but it's sometimes useful for people that maybe have never thought about it before. I'd go to the Better Business Bureau. I'd go to Google Ratings, and you certainly want to look at those things. Um, and if you see a problem, I would ask a salesperson, you know, hey, here's a rating that I saw online. You know, what was the situation with that? So, so you know, everybody can have a, you know, you can be a good retailer and maybe you had a customer complaint and, and maybe the complaint was even a legitimate complaint. But what you didn't see is the resolution on that. You and I have talked about the fact that that you, you had a customer complaint and, and it was resolved and you did a follow-up video. So, so, you know, those kinds of things can happen. So just because there's been a complaint, that wouldn't cause me to disqualify somebody. But, it, you know, it, what I'd say is there's a few things that I look for. One, it, it is a location a magnet for bad news? And here's what I mean by that. And, and, and I'll get into some specifics in a little bit. Uh, you, if you do a Google search of a company name, and I use searches in quotes. So let's say that I, I was going to do a search for the biggest in our industry, Clayton Homes. I'd put Clayton Homes in quotes, and, and I would do a search for consumer complaints, and I'd put that in quotes, and then I'd hit enter. And if a person does that, they're going to find all kinds of information that you may not find with a regular Google search. So I, I think that's an important thing to do. But one, you know, is is a location a magnet for bad news? Um, you know, with new homes, again, one thing that you have with the manufactured home we talked about in the first video, Michael, if even if you bought from a bad retailer, God forbid, and I, I, I don't recommend doing that, but if you bought from somebody that has a reputation, you still have that dispute resolution process that HUD set up. So that's a consumer safeguard that, that you don't want to overly lean on, but you certainly want to be aware of. So, so those are some things that I think that you want to look for. But basically, I would just ask some questions uh, about, uh, you know, hey, would you have some of your own customers that I could speak with? People that have already bought a home from you. If they hesitate doing that, I think that's a red flag. If they do give you the opportunity to do that, 
then, then, you know, and there's no hesitation, I think that's a good signal. But one other thing that I recommend doing um, is this. It, I would tell a, a retailer that I was seriously thinking about doing business with, I'd say, look, if you treat me well, I'm going to tell my friends. If you treat me badly, I'm going to tell my friends. And, and, you know, I may not just tell my friends, I may go to piss consumers and tell them about you too. So, so you know, if you do that, then, then I think you're more likely to end up with, you know, that honest ethical salesperson and honest ethical retailer. Does a typical retailer of manufactured homes, do they work with one company or multiple companies that manufacture homes? A great question. And you're going to find some that do both. So you're going to find some that, that only sell for one particular producer or manufacturer. Some will, will work with several manufacturers. As a consumer, shall I be buying from a big manufacturer or a smaller manufacturer? Are there differences to who manufactures my home? Yeah, so I have plants. I looked at the plants. Of course, my uh, factory will provide uh, a set of standard plans. I'm making an assumption. Uh, style of home is chosen. I'm sure that these factories produce somewhat typical homes with some customization possible into them. Uh, but as a consumer, shall I consider big companies, small companies? What shall be my criteria? It, it, Michael, it, it... A fascinating question. And one, I'd say if it were me and and I had the option apples to apples of picking a big company or picking a smaller company, almost every time I'd say pick the smaller company. Why? You know, I, I would I would use the example of let's say, you know, buying a shoe. If you go to a big box store and you want to buy a shoe, uh, you know, they, they they may they may help you, but usually not very much. With a smaller company, they're, they're typically going to give you that extra attention precisely because they want to grow, they want to satisfy their customer. And, and so, you know, nine times out of 10, I would encourage people to go with that, that you, know, um, you know, more mom and pop size of operation. Now, um, I'd also encourage people to do business with somebody that's local um, for the same reason. You know, that you're going to see that person at Walmart, you're going to see that person at the local bank or wherever you you know, maybe at your church or your synagogue, or your place of worship. So, so when you're doing business with that local person, I think you, you routinely have, you have benefits from that. So I understand the personalization that you get from a smaller company. Am I going to be able to get a tour of the factory if I'm buying? You know, I love to encourage people to go to a factory. Wonderful question, Michael. Um, you know, I've been through many factories myself. And if a person goes to the factory, almost every time, they're going to walk away very impressed. And, and let's take a step back before we dig deeper into this. I'm going to say very quickly that there's two general types of manufactured homes. There's what they call basic or entry level or shade and shelter manufactured homes. And then there's more residential style manufactured homes that you know, are going to look like basically any other site built house. So, so once a person understands that, you know, if you're going to the factory, you're going to see with your own eyes what those construction standards are like. And, and yes, to your point, um, typically, if you're buying from an independent, uh, often that smaller company, they love scheduling a factory tour. You generally have to set a day and a time for that because you know, there's safety considerations. You have to, they make you wear a hard hat and so on. So you can't just pop in at the factory and expect to be toured. So you do have to go to a retailer for that that's set up with that factory. But it, it's a tremendous experience. And, and, you know, I can't think of a single time that a, a customer that I worked with toured a factory that didn't buy a manufactured home. It's just impressive. So, uh that's probably one of the questions, one of the suggestions we can make to our consumers, right? Absolutely. Uh, uh, the suggestion of actually, if you're considering buying a home, it's for most of people, uh, you buy a house once or twice in your life. Uh, it's a big purchasing decision. Before buying, go towards a factory. I, I think that's a great idea. I really do. 
So and respectable retail location would actually wouldn't mind for you to tour the factory to actually see what's going on, and then you can make your decision. So uh, we spoke about big companies. We spoke about small companies. Who do you think uh, the industry leaders are, and why? You know, um, I, I really don't like the ta- the term um, industry leaders. I understand it, so I'm not picking on you, Michael. Um, it, generally, consumers might think of, of um, bigger companies as, as, as a leader, you know, quote unquote. Um, for reasons we already talked about, I, I'd be a big advocate in favor of the smaller companies. And I don't give a specific endorsement to any company because, frankly, things change. Management at a company can change. The workforce can change. Again, the good news is that with a HUD code manufactured home, all of those factories have to build to the federal standards. So, so you know, there's some people that will talk about, you know, my home's better than your home. Well, your home may be fancier than somebody else's home, may have more amenities, but that doesn't mean that it's, quote, better. Um, now that said, so let's put that aside for a minute. Um, I, I, I mentioned uh, Clayton Homes a few minutes ago. They're the biggest. Now, does that mean that they're the leader? Now, a- according to uh, statistical surveys, which is a third-party research organization or federal data, roughly half the industry is 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 built by Clayton Homes, and, and you know, unfortunately. Um, you know, for whatever reason, we could talk about, you know, conspiracy theories or things like that. But the reality is that in news media accounts like Seattle Times, NPR, the Center for Public Integrity, Forbes, the Financial Times, Guru Focus, there's lots of allegations in mainstream media uh, about what they call predatory practices at, at Clayton Homes. Um, and that's often tied in with, with, with lending. There's allegations about, you know, racial bias and things like that. This isn't a secret, but, you know, these are the kinds of things that maybe a consumer may not normally think about. So, again, to go back to what we were talking about um, earlier, if we take a, a, a good Google search, and I put the search in quotes, so you take the word Clayton Holmes, put it in quotes, take the word, um, you know, consumer complaints, put it in quotes. Don't just do an all search. I do two different searches, one under all, one under news. Do both searches. When you do it under news, you're going to come up with all kinds of articles. And you could do this with any manufacturer, not just Clayton. So if you do that, now what you're going to see is, you know, literally third parties reporting on what they say consumer experiences are with respect to Clayton or for that matter, anybody else. Um, I, I'd elaborate just a, a bit more and say that that uh, several lawmakers are often Democrats, but not always. Uh, I'll use Maxine Waters as an example. She and some of her colleagues wrote a last letter to the Justice Department a few years ago and the CFPB, literally asking for an investigation of Clayton Holmes and and you know what they called predatory practices. And um, you know, frankly, Clayton Holmes has admitted. That, you know, they've been fined by the federal government. They've had to refund money to consumers. So, you know, certainly those are factors that I I, I think, you know, a consumer should consider. Now, that, does that mean that you, you should not buy from them? You know, that's something that a person has to weigh. But, um, you know, anytime that there's that many red flags, I, I, I would personally, a, a, as an industry expert and as an advocate for consumers as well as for business, I'd say, you know, you got to look for those red flags and, and you know, um, it, would, it would be a big caution for me. Is Clayton Holmes as compared to the second and third runner up in the industry? Yeah, there, about half of the industry is Clayton Holmes. And, and frankly, um, you know, there's some indications, I won't say proof, but there's indications that, that they and some others in the Manufactured Housing Institute have um, it maybe are working with each other in, in certain ways. Um, it, there was a, a video done by a, a guy on HBO. Uh, his name is John Oliver, and he has a program called Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Uh, this was last year. It's a 16-minute video. 
Oliver is a kind of a satirist, but he covers news topics with a satirical twist. And in this video, we did some research on MH Living News so a person could go and see that. Literally every company in that video, and they had both community operators and people that, you know, Clayton Homes was prominently featured. It, it, every one of these companies were manufactured housing institute members. Now, now you would think that, and, and by the way, I don't want to say that manufactured housing institute means everybody in there is, you know, shady or, or, or dishonest or whatever. I, I personally know people in that organization that are fine. And I should give as a disclosure that I used to be on the board of directors of the, of the suppliers division at MHI until we parted ways a few years ago. But that said, you know, when you've got just numbers and numbers of complaints and things like that, John Oliver video that, that cites their sources. So it's not just a bunch of allegations. There's allegations with, with documentation. It, those are reasons to to sit back and, and and think twice. Another thing that that John Oliver hit, and, and a big thing for consumers is the community side of the industry, Michael. So you know, if you're gonna, you can either buy a home and put it on your own property, or you can buy a home and go into a manufactured home community, what some people call mobile home parks. So one of the guys in that John Oliver video is a guy named Frank Rolf, and he and his partner. Um, they're, they're quite large in our industry and they're getting bigger. And Exhibit C, which I'll show you a copy of, it's letters from Senator Elizabeth Warren. And she actually names a number of these companies. So it's a very good consumer resource in my mind that, that had been accused of doing improper things with residents of manufactured home communities. So, so if I was a consumer, whether I was a Democrat, Republican or independent, I would look at that, um, you know, list of, of companies that, that, you know, Senator Warren cited. And I, you know, that I would put that on my, you know, red flag list. Is this the kind of place I want to do business? Um, and a number of members of Congress have, have, have done, you know, similar kinds of, uh, of communications about specific companies. That said, I, I would want to stress, Michael, that just because there's some some big players and, and you know, purportedly, um, you know, problematic or predatory players. That's not a reason to throw the baby out with the bathwater. There's lots of good companies in the industry. That, and, and again, they just tend to be smaller companies. So if a person can, you know, find those honest, ethical, smaller companies, I, I think you're routinely better off. So let's say a person bought a manufactured home. What is the typical, uh, I know you've done some research on this consumer, you've seen some of the complaints, plus your expertise as far as the industry is concerned, right? What is the typical consumer complaints that you've seen? So the kinds of complaints that I think are the most common are, are going to fall into broadly three categories. There's finance complaints. There's um, complaints about installation. And there's complaints about service. So if you're so if you're looking at an installation complaint, if I was the consumer and you're watching this video, or you've been on my website and, and you know you're looking at this video on my website, I'm gonna have a link to that that uh, HUD dispute resolution. I would tell the retailer very quickly, you know, hey, if you don't take care of this. I will contact, you know, the state and HUD and, and, you know, one way or another, you're going to fix this. So, so a um, Michael, the best thing I could tell a consumer, um, let's take two steps back and then we'll, we'll, we'll take a step forward. The best thing that you can do is avoid the, the, the problem in the first place. Right. And the way you avoid the problem is by telling the, the retailer, Everything that we discuss, I want it in writing. I want it in my paperwork. And so there's none of this, he sh said, she said. There's none of this, well, you promised me. Uh, you know, anything that a consumer has on their mind before they buy, that's when it should be reduced to writing. And I personally had a manufactured home retail center. We were in business for several years. And, and I'm not saying I'm the only one because there's others that could probably say similarly. I never had a letter from an attorney. 
on behalf of a consumer. I never was sued on behalf of a consumer because we did exactly what we promised. So, so you know, if you do what you promise, then, then you know, 90% of the consumer complaints are going to go away. Now, if you have that complaint to, to specific, specifically address your question, what I would be doing, Michael, is this. Uh, I would say, look, I'm an educated consumer. I know about websites like Piss Consumer. I know about the HUD dispute resolution process. If you don't take care of this situation, you know, it, it's going to cost you business. It's not a threat. It's a reality. I'm going to make my complaints. Other people are going to see the complaints. And, and you know, it, it's going to cost you more to, to, you know, lose somebody else's possible business than it would to, to satisfy me as a com- customer. And, and so to, to elaborate on that, you know, uh, in fairness to our industry, and, um, you know, I, I did a search on YouTube. You can do, you can have consumer complaints about three, four, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars site built home. So I just picked one. It's DR Horton. It's a builder I happen to know. It's a big, you know, regional slash national builder. Um, there's certainly plenty of others out there, Lennar or whoever. But I did a web search under DR Horton. It's interesting. Your your video on Piss Consumer was the first one that came up. So so you can have consumer complaints on literally very expensive conventional housing. So again, you want to look at this thing, you know, not just from a manufactured housing perspective. If I'm thinking about buying between a manufactured home and a site-built home, it, frankly, there are more consumer protections for a manufactured home in most cases. So, so you know, and you could spend many thousands of dollars more on that conventional house. So. Um, at the end of the day, what, what a person should be doing is looking for um, a way to communicate effectively with that retailer and say, look, one way or another, you're going to make me happy. And, and if, if I were you, I'm just going to suggest I'm not threatening you, Mr. Mr. Seller. I'm just saying I'm, I'm going to keep being the squeaky wheel until I get the attention that I deserve. Now. Last thought, I think that on that subject, unless you want to elaborate more, I think there are times that a consumer, in all fairness, they have an unrealistic expectation. You know, if you buy a shade and shelter manufactured home, for example, um, you know, the, the cabinetry in there may be basic cabinets as opposed to, you know, uh, you know, fancy cabinets. The same thing can happen in an apartment. The same thing can happen in a site built home. So if you have a, a, a an entry level manufactured home, for instance, that has um, what they call a wrapped cabinet, so you've got you know a, a photo finish or something over over particle board or OSB or some kind of surface like that. Um, if you have a dog or a cat and they start scratching away at that, guess what? It's going to look like heck. Is that the seller's fault? Absolutely not. And you know, so that's not really something that HUD would care about, the state won't care about, the manufacturer won't care about, and, and, and odds are really good that that's going to be covered in your closing paperwork. That said, as long as you're asking about something that's a legitimate consumer complaint, the, the home you know, wasn't properly installed, there's a roof leak, there's a plumbing leak, usually those kinds of things, a good real retailer they want to get t- that taken care of quickly. You know, it, it's it's easier to solve a, a, a water problem, you know, on the front end than to let it persist. And now the problem is just going to become more expensive. So a good retailer, a good factory, they want to address that quickly. And, and, and the simplest thing to do is, is just let them know, hey, listen, this is an important issue. Please take care of it quickly. If you don't, you're going to hear from me again and again until it's done. What is a typical warranty? on the manufactured home? Excellent question. So the, the structure itself is going to have a warranty and each manufacturer is going to offer something a little bit different. But, but the typical minimum warranty is going to be one year on the structure. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't get a longer warranty. You can also buy what they call extended warranties. And, and so that's available. The other things that you're going to be looking at is warranty on things like the siding, on things like shingles, 
Um, a, a typical warranty on shingles of a home is going to be 15 to 20, sometimes 30 years. A uh, typical warranty on, let's say, vinyl siding, it, it, it may be, you know, 20, 30 or more years on the vinyl siding. There's um, a, a kind of a siding called hardy board or smart board or things like that. There's different brand names for that. Those will often have multi-decade warranties. So, so they're, they're good products. They last a long time and they have good warranties. Then you have appliance warranties where you have heating and air conditioning warranties. And those are also manufacturer specific. And technically, it's not the manufactured home builder that's warrantying that. It's the maker of that appliance or the maker of that heater or that air condition. I really enjoyed our second meeting for the second video. Thank you very much. Very much appreciate your time and your knowledge that you're sharing with our consumers. Uh, we are putting together this uh, series of videos to educate the consumers about the pros, cons associated with manufactured homes. And I appreciate you uh, spending time with us talking about it. First, I, I would say that that, you know, we have a lot of respect for your resource. That's how we, you know, we, we met is, you know, I contacted you because of a video that you had. And I think you guys do a great job of giving consumers a place where they can complain, you know, outside, you know, the normal stream. I think that's useful. But to your point, it, you know, especially the older consumer, if somebody's, let's say, 50 or older, and that's about half of our industry's market, a lot of those people have already owned a site built home. And a lot of them will, after they've toured that factory, they're happy to buy the manufactured home. And they may be selling a site-built home and buying a manufactured home. So you're 100% right. If you are thinking about a manufactured home, especially if this is a second home for you, then, then I would think that going to the factory is going to answer a lot of questions. I, I would quickly add that not every factory does customizations. Many do. But, you know, if, if you want to customize your home, there's obviously going to be a charge for that, but it's still going to be less expensive than having a site built home. So, so, you know, the long and the short of it is you do learn a lot from going to the factory. And, and if you're working with a good ethical retailer, especially someone that's been in business for a while, then, then. A lot of the typical headaches that a consumer experiences can be avoided. So consumers, please subscribe to our channel. This is uh, video number two out of uh, a collection of probably five or six videos that we're going to do with Tony. We're really going to do deep dive into the industry of manufactured homes, trying to bring to you the useful information about home purchasing experience. Tony, thank you very much. You have any closing? Thank you, Michael. I, pre I appreciate the opportunity.